also before getting to the imaging room you want to make sure that you have all of your equipment and also in the morning that you sign your name in this book here that'll make sure that your time slot is empty and that you can come in without having to wait in line for this machine so what you want to have is your one mill pipette uh, one mill pipette tips uh, more of these Eppendorf tubes, at least one of them a section of parafilm some paper towel uh, these flat uh, tweezers really help USB drive your imaging solution uh, this garbage bin is optional uh, so some saran wrap and of course your membrane so so we can start using this machine just tap on the spring to turn it on we can just insert our USB drive now if I can get them the right slot. Okay. So it's going to ask you for your screen name and password. I have my own. Uh, but before you start using it independently, you're going to have someone that's going to set it up for you. So it's a line up here. And just sign in. There are a couple different settings. Some people use it for nucleic acids, uh, but we're going to select coming blocks. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to go away from the reflection. And let's get started with the image. Alright, so the only thing I've done so far is just spread out a piece of saran wrap. And I'll explain what that's for later. So we need to mix our imaging solution first. And it's always going to come in two parts. In this case, I'm using the super temperate solutions. And for the regular solution, you're going to have a much bigger bottle. Um, this one will get you an image much faster, but it's much more expensive. These two bottles cost about $400 combined. So... The last thing you want to do with these, especially with the stock solution, is mix them accidentally. So what I have to do whenever I actually get some of the solution, I put it into a separate uh, container, and then I'm going to change the pipette tip immediately after. Close this back up so I don't get confused, which is which. Move this side, and then go into the other solution. At this point, I can just mix these two together. And so long as I'm not going back into the stock solutions, I can keep reusing this tip to grab the solution while I'm actually trying to get onto the membrane itself. Let's start here. <clears throat> okay. Now that we have this mixed, I'm going to explain what this is for. Uh, this is basically just going to be your workstation for uh, the membrane, uh, getting the solution onto the membrane. Just want to make sure this is mixed by titrating it just a little bit. If you are going to, like, say you have a lot of memories and you want to make like a little bit uh, for later use, as in like five minutes later, just try to keep it in like a darker area since this is a little bit light sensitive. So, what I'm doing, I'm just going to put this solution right onto the saran wrap, grab my memory here with my tweezers and I like to always grab it by the ladder section so it's not going to actually mess up any of the proteins that I have that I'm testing on and what I'm going to do is just put the space down directly onto the solution it's okay to touch the back of the membrane so long as you're not touching the front the proteins aren't on the back just try to spread it around get some more uh, what I did I added 40 or 400 uh, microliters of solution each and that's going to be more than sufficient for basically any kind of any size membrane you have so long as it's about uh, half if you have a whole membrane you might want to do a little bit more we just set this here all right now i'll set this up we can let that sit just for a little bit to make sure that the solution really covers the entire face of that membrane so now we have a set the chemi parts we can just start by opening this up. I can grab this pair of film here. This is going to act as a barrier between the glass and the membrane. So I'm just going to put this directly onto the glass. And you want to try to not get any of the liquid in between the two pieces. This can be a little bit tedious at times. 
All right, now I've got it. I've got it now, but it's there's a little bit of liquid that should be all right. Now it's been sitting here for about uh, 30 seconds. Just gonna grab the edge. Here's my right hand. Okay. Grab me from the ladder again. Now this is, it was face down before, so I want to put a right side up. And when I'm putting this down, I also want to make sure that there's no air bubbles between the membrane and the parafilm. This is much more difficult with larger membranes, but with a smaller strip like this, it's much easier. Once this is in the machine, just want to close it up. And as for just setting the solution onto the membrane, that step is done at this point. Now it's just going to come right down to the imaging. And this takes a little while. Okay, so all you have to do right now, you're not going to see any of the bands yet. Um, it's especially difficult to see with the glare. Um, but we're just going to do smart exposure. Most of this is automated, so it's pretty simple, fortunately. And we can see some of the bands here. So next we want to just do capture. And we can see our bands lighting up very nicely. At least most of them. These two are a little bit dim. Um, what I like to do and what's much easier to see when you're actually going to edit these down is select membrane overlay. Now you can actually see the outlines of the membrane where it actually physically looks like along with the bands itself. Once you have this on, just press done. Add the next port in. Go next. Um, let me show you. This part you don't really play around with. So long as the USB is in, uh, which I've done in the previous step, then everything will be set up and ready to go. You can just name this whatever you want. It's always going to vary between which sample you have. Uh, in my case, it's going to be a much older date. At the very end, what I always like to do is just the primary antibody that you're using. In this case, it's vinculin. And this vinculin is something you're going to be using a lot. It's just a housing, uh, housekeeping gene, housekeeping protein. Okay. So once we save the image, just go ahead and inject the membrane. Another reason I really like having the parafilm here is that this membrane can dry out uh, the longer that you keep it in here. So with this parafilm, it's not going to stick to the glass. So it's much easier to just grab off and you don't really have to worry about damaging it. Once I've grabbed it, just put it right into the solution here. And you're done. You can just move right onto the next membrane you have if you're going to be doing multiple. If you are doing multiple, just try to wipe this down. Keep it clean for the next one, and just keep moving on. Continue until you're done with all of them. Once you want to clean up, we're just going to take out this parafilm here. Throw that away. Throw away your saran wrap. Any other garbage that you have. Take out your USB. Don't do that. Okay, it's just being courteous because the next person that's going to be using it tried to use some um, ethanol. These two bottles are usually filled with ethanol. Actually, uh, you'll hopefully see them filled most of the time. Just wipe this down. Then we can log out. I prefer to sign out rather than uh, close it up first. 
because it's just pushing the loading screen for the longest time. And just using left and on the screen as well. Not many people do this. Just try to just try to do it for other people. Try to do that without pressing the button like I just did. And just close it up. You can take all your stuff back to the room then.